Hello everyone, my name is Dave Dustin. Welcome to another episode of my show on the history of comics. Looking at some of the rarest comic related stuff on the planet. This is going to be another show about Avon Comics related production materials. You have to see all my other previous few videos of the ones that I received. This is going to be a show about the parts that I did not buy. So this is stuff that's gone into other people's collections that from the seller. And I'm going to show you a bunch of the same stuff. It's really cool. I got printouts of uh, photos of all these things. And there's more original hand-drawn cover art. There's original hand-drawn lettering, printer's proofs, uh, reverse negatives. There's unrevised covers. I found a bunch of unrevised covers where you're going to see stuff that nobody's seen before. Like... This stuff was done 60, 70 years ago, and nobody has seen these things since it was done. Like it, The people who were around back then, they're pretty much all gone nowadays. Or if not, they are in their like 90s or 100s. So like in modern times, nobody has seen these things. And a lot of this, the unrevised art, it's they had pasteovers put over top. So the only way you would see that these original copies is if you were to take the pasteovers off the original artwork boards and see what's underneath the pasteovers. So we have printer's proofs that I'm going to show you that nobody's seen these things. This is a fantastic. Like, I love discovering new things and I'm going to share it all with you. So everyone watching this along right now, you're going to be the first ones in the world to really get a look at these things that nobody really knows about. Some more really rare, rare stuff. And I'm going to get into it. I'm going to start. I'm going to show you a couple unrevised pieces right here. So, this is really awesome. Just to get everyone to the show and let you know what I'm going to be talking about in just a minute. Look at this. Space Detective number 2, November 1951. Here's the published version. Wallywood, I believe Joe Orlando inks and Wallywood pencils. Look at that cover. It's totally different. You can see the aliens don't have those weird antler things on their heads. Like a whole bunch of the Avon comics, they put those weird antlers on the aliens' heads. Wally Wood's original cover did not have those antlers on the heads of the aliens. You see he's got a different blaster in the, in the astronaut's hand there. This one here looks like a, it's the same as the girls. Looks like it's got a clip. That's been changed, so it just looks like a regular pistol here with like a trigger guard with fingers on. That clip's not there. You get a better look at his hand. And the blaster, it was shooting him in the foreground. You can see it coming off his head. Where here, it's more in the middle of his head. You don't see that same angle. They change that. And then look at their chins. Look at the alien's chins. They're attached to their chests. You see it's kind of like gangly, stringy things attaching them. And same with the guy in the background, you see his also here. It's like his chin is attached to his chest. Totally changed, so that's not there anymore. And then of course you can see stuff like also like the clawed foot at the bottom there. That got covered up by the text box, so you'd never see that because the text is in the way. That's wild. Unrevised cover art. Like, nobody's seen this. <laughs> Nobody knows this stuff exists. Because when they published it, they made changes. So nobody saw the original. Nobody knows about these. Crazy, crazy stuff. I love finding these new things. Here's another one. So here's Eerie number 7. From June 1952. is by Sid Check. You got a vampire coming in the window. Here is the unrevised cover for Eerie number 7. There's no more reflection in the coffin. He's not in there at all. And it's a totally different vampire coming in the window. Like, that's wicked awesome. Look at that guy. Totally different vampire. I guess they, they didn't like the way he looked and they covered him up with this vampire instead. And that's what they published. So nobody has ever seen this vampire. Like, that's wild. Really cool. I love the old horror comics. Those are my favorites. So seeing like an old, like stuff like that cover that I've never seen before, I love finding new things like that. So anyway, I'm going to get into showing you a whole bunch of stuff. So everything that was sold in the same seller. So of course... You have to watch the other videos. I explain everything. This is original Avon Comics art. And what happened was it was left behind at their printers, which I believe was uh, Eastern Coloring. And the print shop was bought by Israel Waldman, IW Comics, Super Comics, 1958. He bought a printer shop with materials to produce hundreds and hundreds of other people's comics that they had left at this printer shop 
So he didn't have the rights to, to publish any of these things, but he had all the materials. He had all these printer's proofs and original artwork, and he had the printing plates and matrices. So he just published all these comics and reprinted them all without any authority because all these comic companies that he was copying, they were all defunct. They all shut down because of the comics code coming out. They all closed up shop. They were all gone. So he got all their material and he printed it. He was not code approved. There was no seal of approval. So he did not get very big distribution. As I read it was in a, like grocery stores and multi-packs. They sold these comics. But he has all this material from Avon Comics and like dozens of others. I think there was like over 30 publishers he had material from. But there was a lot of Avon stuff in there. So this is the Avon stuff that he had bought and then used to do these reprints in the later 50s. And I got this box from the seller. This is pretty awesome. So this is from IW Super Comics. He's got box number three. There was an N. They changed it to an A. See the N here? Scratch out A. Number one of two. Comic book negatives for covers and titles. So that's a really neat little piece of history there. That's the box that it all came in. So this box was full of all kinds of production material for Avon Comics. So we'll just get into it. I'll go in order from the recent sales. So for the last two months, he has been selling uh, one lot per week for the last couple months. So there was like eight giant lots that came for sale. So Brian is out in uh, Bar, Massachusetts. He had this in his, uh, in his collection for like 10, 12 years, he told me. And before that, he had bought it from a dealer who had got it from a storage locker find in New Jersey. So anyway, we'll go through all the stuff that he had from Avon Comics in here. So we'll start off. So this was the first lot that showed up that I noticed. It was uh, May 28th, 2022, The Saint. Whole bunch of stuff from The Saint there, a whole bunch of printer's proofs. There's a color printer's proof in there. Oh, we got The Saint. We got a color proof. There's a whole cover. There's the back of the cover. It's all the same stuff. I'm not really into the crime stuff, like The Saint. I've, I've never. I've only read like one one Saint comic. I was never really into the Saint. I don't really like that much crime stuff. I like the horror sci-fi is of course my favorite. There's more of the Saint. More of the Saint. A whole bunch of stuff. So that was the first lot that it sold in. Then came the next lot. So this was the following week. This was June 5th, 2022. There was this Western lot. You can see he's got Cow Puncher, Badman. See it's got some cool stuff in here because it has down here Black Hawk Indian Tomahawk War. That is right there. You can tell from looking at it. It is a original artwork piece. This is original, hand drawn. It's got pastovers on it. There's a pastover that came off. Two people fighting. There's original. There's Silver Kid. So that looks like it's original as well. You can see the glue on the edges of the piece there. The rest of them though, they look like they're all printers proofs. Everything else, reverse negatives. Oh, there's, there's some more close-ups of the Western. Juan Trell's Raiders. So there's that, that Western lot. Had a bunch of stuff. Then the third lot came out. So this was June 13th, 2022. So this was the horror sci-fi lot that I bought. So, of course... This was fantastic. I, I cannot believe that this score here. L.B. Cole, original cover. It was not a comic. It was an activity book about space, but still original sci-fi cover by L.B. Cole. Like, that is just, that's awesome. That's the greatest thing ever. Out of this world, unpublished cover by Joe Kubert. They went with a different cover on it. So this one was unused cover art. And it was a fantastic piece of artwork. The original cover art. Escape from Devil's Island from Everett Kinsler. We got the original hand-drawn lettering for Flying Saucers. Like the original hand-drawn China. We got just so much, so much awesome pieces. That was great. I love having that. Lot number four came out the following week. So this is June 21st, 2022. This sold. This was a romance lot. See, it's got some glue on here. So some original stuff. 
Unfortunately, it has right there, that's the table of contents from my space activity book, LB Cool Cover Art. It got mixed into someone else's lot. I didn't notice it. They still have it. Trying to get it from them. I haven't heard back since they first contacted me. I'm hoping I'm going to get back in contact. This guy, Wayne, that has it. I'd love to get that to put it back on. You see, he got some cool stuff mixed in too. He got this. This is from Reform School Girl right there. And then there's also a story from Reform School Girl that he has the printer's proof of here. And there's some neat gangsters and gun moles covers. Uh, let's see a close up of some of the pieces. Right, that's neat. There are some other stuff there. Then the next lot came out, lot number five, June 29th, 2022. So, of course, this was the jungle and boy detective lot that I also bought. This had, because I already had the picture from Everett Kinsler, the, the uh, skull from Escape from Devil's Island, original hand drawn lettering from Escape from Devil's Island, the reprint done in 1958 by IW Super. It's, it's not the original from Avon, the original from Avon had capital letters. This one's in lowercase, but still it's got that. So that's the I, IW reprint. And then there's proofs of that. Got some white princess of the jungle. So that goes with uh, the Sheena hand-drawn lettering I have was used over top to change the title on that. And then some boy detective. There's also, a, oh, that's neat though. This one here, it was a revised cover where they changed a monkey into a man on this white princess of the jungle. They totally changed the person on the cover. Added a guy. There's an unpublished cover, Boy Detective number five, not known to exist. They only published one before. And there's the cover number five. So I got that. I got that lot. You've seen my other videos, and you've also seen that I got this lot. Number six, the sixth lot up was uh, July 6th, 2022. This is, of course, the crime and romance lot that has Reform School Girl cover art. There's the lettering, printer's proof from Reform School Girl. And the big text box that's on the cover. And there's also a couple of the story titles. Uh, I tried to bury my past. And Fast Company. Then there's also some really cool stuff. There is some unrevised covers here for some crime comics. From Dynamic. Sensational Police Cases. One of, you got to see my other videos I talk about that. Another great lot. And then a couple more lots came out. There was then this Wild Bill lot that came out July 13th, 2022. See, he's got a whole bunch of color printer's proofs. And a whole bunch of color proofs. That's neat. So that's a Graham Ingalls cover for EC Comics. And then the final group to come out was another Wild Bill and Western lot. This was July 20th, 2022. So this has a bunch more, bunch more color, printer's proofs. Oh, it also has a, a Buddies in the U.S. Army. So this is neat too because it's got, here's a revision. I printed some stuff off to show you. So up here it's got three or four printer's proofs for Buddies in the U.S. Army. You see the published version, and then there's this printer's proof here where it's been revised. So that's the original. She had a hat on her head on in the original, and she had a different dress on that came up on both sides of her neck. They changed her dress to only being one-sided. Only one leg was sticking out. Now they have both her legs sticking out, showing her stockings off. They totally changed that cover. So you can see here, that's what was published. And that there is the reverse negative printer's proof of the original cover art that was revised when they published Buddies in the U.S. Army, November 1952. So that's cool. So there's another revised cover we got in that lot there. And there's a bunch more Western Wild Bill stuff that was in that collection there. That's neat. So that was all the recent ones. So there was eight big groups that sold recently, and that was all of them. 
but he had been selling this artwork for like a couple years here and there. And I had asked if he could somehow send me photos of the stuff that I hadn't seen. And the seller was kind enough. He sent me pictures printed out with the last uh, purchase I made inside that package. Had all these pictures from previous sales over the last, I guess, couple years of stuff that I didn't see. And it's got some really crazy stuff in there too. So I'll look over that. So you can see here, we got some original artwork. We got the original artwork for King Solomon's Mines lettering. We got the original lettering for Planet Comics, uh, Space Mysteries, and Apache, Mano Mars, Jet Power, a whole bunch of lettering. We got some proofs. So that's a neat little lot that he sold. And he sold this other lot here. Bunch more proofs. Looks like we got some original lettering. Song of Six Guns, the original lettering. Wild Western Roundup, the original lettering. Whole bunch of proofs of Western stuff. That's neat a lot. We got a, he had a Kit Carson lot. So there we got a whole bunch of original lettering up here. And then there's a proof of it down below. This title was changed actually, Kit Carson and the Blackfeet Warriors. They changed the name so it wasn't Blackfeet Warriors anymore. I can't remember what they changed it to though. And you can see down here, that's neat too. You got uh, this Kit Carson has the girl. That's the same girl that they've used multiple times on crime comics. Girl looking over her shoulder. It's neat though, a lot. We got some more Western stuff. We have a lot of Jesse James. So that looks like original art right there at the top. Jesse James Western Outlaw looks like it's got like a overlay cover that comes down over the board. And then the rest look like all printer's proofs, all Jesse James Western stuff. You got another lot here of U.S. paratroops, war dogs, the U.S. Army, the U.S. Marines in action, a whole bunch of proofs, a bunch of war comics. Avon did. He had a bunch more of uh, the Saint stuff. There's a bunch more stuff, the Saint cover proofs. Here we got some kids comics. This is kind of neat here. This is what I'm talking about. Progressive proofs. Post photo engraving cork. I'm not sure what was in there. I think that would have been interesting to see what was inside that. A whole bunch of kids comics, funny tunes, space comics, a bunch of proofs. So here's some more interesting stuff. So here, they had sold a painting, Everett Raymond Kinsler, original painting. What's kind of weird about this is it has Steel Savage Korea, but the comic that was published is Steve Savage, Captain Steve Savage and his Jet Fighters number two. So there's the published comic and there's an original painting done by Everett Raymond Kinsler. That's kind of cool. And we have this here, a little crime lot. So here we got the color proof of police cases. Sensation police cases. So what's neat is up here. So here's an issue of Boy Detective. So there's a reverse negative. Boy Detective. So I had actually had that flipped around on Photoshop. So there's the original published Boy Detective number two from 1951. And here is the original unrevised cover art. So the cop is not laying down shooting his gun. That cop is laying there dead, it looks like, in the original cover art. And I guess they figured, well, this is, you know, of course, before the comic code, 50, 1951. So they did their own self-censoring. So they went far, as far as to do printer's proofs. Like it was penciled, it was inked, it went for, for getting the proofs done. And then they decided, you know what, we got to change that. So they changed it so the cop is still alive. But look at all the other stuff you lost. Like there's an arched window behind with bars on it. There's a window up here on the building. There's a sewer grate there, a catch basin. None of that is seen anymore when they revise the cover art for Boy Detective here. So it's kind of neat to be able to see how it was meant to look before the revisions. 
Now we're getting into some really cool stuff. So the last few lots are pretty cool. That's why I saved these ones for last. So here we go. City of the Living Dead. So I got a uh, reverse negative just like this one. City of Living Dead. But then he also had Phantom Witch Doctor. Robot Men of the Lost Planet. There's a Cow Puncher. Those are all really awesome. Also, I also got uh, the Hooded Menace. So I noticed this right away at the bottom. You see the Hooded Menace? That is another unrevised printer's proof. So here you can see the Hooded Menace, 1951. And you can see that the rider in the background has a whip in his hands. It looks like a cat of nine tails whip. And they change also the text. So the text at the bottom says, the secret society that terrorized women and men alike. Whereas here is the original unrevised cover for Hooded Menace, 1951. You can see the rider in the background does not have a whip. He has a handgun. He has a pistol in his hands. It's like there, it looks like he's got a revolver in his hands. It's not a whip anymore. And they changed the lettering. It used to say, Desperate Killers Who Terrorized the Northwest. And they changed that lettering. What is it there? But it, they reused that same sort of lettering inside the front cover. It says, The Hooded Menace, Desperate Killers Who Kidnapped and Murdered the Terror of the Northwest. You can see at the top here. So that's inside the front cover. So they rearranged some lettering. Now this is really cool. So this here, you can see, of course, what I had just shown you was Eerie number seven and the entirely different vampire, Eerie number seven, that was done by Sid Check. So that was in this lot here. Another cool piece, well, well here's something else that's cool. They got the Secret Diary of Eerie. So that was, of course, remainder comics that they put together and rebound them to try and resell them. Part of this comic is the sorry. Part of this proof is stuck to a proof that I have. I can ha I have the green shoulder here and a little bit of this text that went down the spine. Fortunately, a bunch of these got a little bit of water damage. Some stuff stuck to some other pieces. The ones that got a little bit wet. They also had uh, here's a new one, eerie number three. So here in the middle, you see eerie number three. That is an unrevised cover also. So that's really cool because that's another Wallywood art horror comic. Eerie number three, October 1951, Wallywood. Here is Eerie number three, the unrevised. You see that big white space beside the girl? I always thought it looked kind of out of place to have a big, like, white wall in the background there. I always kind of thought that looked kind of funny because it wasn't supposed to be a white background there. It was supposed to have pictures hanging on the wall and they removed these pictures from the wall and just made a white box. <laughs> if they revise it, I guess they didn't because they figured it distracted too much from the good girl art with the headlights there by Wallywood, so they took away the pictures in the background. Different. Never knew that. Then here is final lot. So this has some really cool stuff in it as well. You see, this has got space detective, so this has of course, the space detective I showed you, Wally Woodward, the aliens don't have antlers and they have their chins are attached to their chests and look a lot more horrific. That was in this final lot here I'm showing you. And it's also got, oh, as you can see, it's got the strange planets. Number six, that's really cool. It's got the printer's proof for the original Avon. And it's got the printer's proof reverse negative for the IW Super reprint. You can tell he's got different feet. They look they're more like tentacles at the bottom. Got some witchcraft covers. Those are really cool comics. Witchcraft, flying saucers, printer's proof. So here's some more revised covers. So here, Diary of Horror. That's another revised cover. So here is Diary of Horror, number one. Published 1952, they only made one of them. Here's the unrevised cover. There was a background, so just like that Eerie that had a white wall, so they have all white in the background, like a big white wall behind them. It was supposed to be a stone wall, and there's torches burning hanging off the wall. They took all of that background stuff off and just left it white. So another unrevised cover.
And then this, of course, is gonna is really cool as well. Secret Mysteries. So you see there's two issues. This is strange because it's the only thing in here that is not Avon Comics related. This is from a publisher named Merit. Like, so this got mixed in, I guess, by mistake by IW Super. There's a one down here, Secret Mysteries down here. They made three issues. Like this company, Merit, they only part of, like published five comics and, and then they went out of business. They came around like 1954, 1955. So right as the comics code was coming in, all these publishers were shutting down. So they continued a few titles and they continued the original numbering from other publishers. I think they did Beware. I can't remember now. They, they did, anyway, they did this Secret Mysteries. So they did three issues of it. So this first issue, not code approved. But then the next two issues were. So here is the next issue. Secret Mysteries, it was numbered, I think it was 17, 18, 19, were the three issues they did. This is number 18, from May 1955. Now it's got the title down here, uh, Aid from Yesterday. So that is the first story in the book. But if you look at this proof here, it has a, a story on the cover called Date with Death. So that was the second story in the book. So what this is, is this is an unpublished cover. They went with this cover instead, which got code approval at the top, because their last issue did not have the seal of approval on it. And if you didn't have the seal of approval back then, like this is at the time when you were required to have it for distributors to distribute your books. If you didn't have the code seal on there, they just, like a lot of them, returned bundles of comics unopened because they refused to distribute them. They were not code approved. So the distributors did not want to handle them. So, so their first issue here did not have code approval. This issue did, but this is the unrevised cover. This is the, sorry, the unpublished cover for it. So here's a better look at it. You can see a vampire bat flying in. And there's Secret Mysteries number 18, the unpublished cover. That's really cool. You know, we'll see like these horror covers that were unpublished. So it's like never before seen stuff. This stuff is so rare. Nobody knows this stuff exists. Like you can't find these things anywhere. That's crazy. Secret Mysteries. It's a pretty cool looking cover too. I like that. Anyway, that's it for me for now. Till next time. Cheers.